X-Men comics have been host to a multitude of bizarre and interesting characters over the years. In a world filled with mutants and superheroes alike, you'd think there isn't much that could be truly weird, but these comics certainly fit the bill. So prepare for what might feel like a drug-induced trip down memory lane, because we're taking a look at some of the weirdest guest appearances in X-Men history. So with this in mind, I'm Dan from What Culture, and these are 10 bizarre cameos in X-Men comics. Number 10, Santa Claus. Santa has had more than a handful of appearances for Marvel Comics, but one that especially comes to mind is from 1991's Marvel Holiday Special. In this story, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants are making trouble around Christmas time. The X-Men, of course, jump into action, struggling at first until a jolly man in a red suit comes to their assistance. He handily deals with the Brotherhood and introduces himself as Kris Kringle. The team is understandably sceptical, but soon grow to believe him when he turns the Brotherhood into toys. Unfortunately, the X-Men can hardly thank him before they are teleported away, with their minds being completely wiped of the experience, courtesy of Mr. Claus himself. Number 9. Darth Vader Star Wars comics are published by Marvel, so perhaps Darth Vader's appearance on this list isn't the strangest. And yes, technically Vader himself hasn't actually appeared in the comics, but his costume certainly has. Kitty Pryde tests out a costume creation machine that apparently was just lying around on a Shi'ar spaceship. After a montage of costumes, Kitty tries on Darth Vader's suit, much to Nightcrawler's apparent worry. This has no real bearing on the plot, and nothing of consequence really happens because of it. The 80s X-Men references pop culture icons a lot in this manner, and it's always nice to see one beloved franchise show respect to another, even if it is only for a brief panel. Number 8. The Star Trek Cast while chasing Proteus through dimensional portals, most of the cast of X-Men the Animated Series wind up in the Star Trek universe. Their ship is destroyed, and they are forced aboard the Enterprise, doing so in secret. Spock soon finds them, and after some misunderstandings, the two teams decide to team up to stop Proteus. And just in case you're disappointed that they featured the wrong Star Trek cast, a few years later, a second series landed the X-Men and the Next Generation cast into a team up. Eventually, in a move that feels weird for both franchises, a crossover novel was published under the name Planet X. Number 7. Frankenstein By the late 60s, early Marvel creators must have been running out of ideas because in 1967, X-Men number 40 borrowed the concept of Frankenstein's monster. To their credit, Marvel writers did put their own spin on it, going to great lengths to explain how Mary Shelley's book was actually non-fiction and Frankenstein's monster was in fact a high-tech android with a possible mutant creator. The X-Men ultimately defeat the monster and, in a big reveal, Professor X tells the team that Frankenstein's monster was actually an android built by aliens. It was sent to Earth long ago to act as a liaison to humanity, but it malfunctioned and was condemned to be frozen in ice. When it was thawed, it misidentified the X-Men's bright costumes as those of its creators. It would almost be tragic if the plot wasn't so bonkers. And to add further confusion to it all, the actual Frankenstein's monster has appeared in several Marvel comics since, but this version of the character is a one-off, never to appear again. Number 6. Teen Titans In 1982, the Teen Titans and Uncanny X-Men were quite possibly the most popular superhero teams in comics. So, you can imagine the collective excitement from Marvel and DC fans alike when the one-shot crossover, the Uncanny X-Men and the new Teen Titans, was announced. What's even more exciting is that it's actually quite good. The plot teams up the two superhero groups and pits them against a collection of Darkseid, Deathstroke, and the Dark Phoenix. Darkseid schemes to use the power of the Dark Phoenix for his own malicious purposes. The heroes are initially captured, but rally against the villains, allowing Cyclops and Professor X a brief moment to plead to the last bit of Jean Grey's humanity within the Dark Phoenix. They beg it to destroy Darkseid, and in a sacrifice much like the original climax of the Dark Phoenix saga, Jean gives her life a second time and saves the universe. Number 5. Wildcats one of the biggest real-life storylines of the 1990s comic book scene was the defection of Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, and a host of other major writers and artists from the big-name comic book publishers to creator-owned independent publisher 
Image Comics. At the core of this conflict was comic creators wanting to own the original characters they created for companies like Marvel and DC, which would allow them to make royalties if the characters turned out to be profitable. For years, comic creators were overworked and underpaid for companies that reported huge profits using the creator's works. Image was created by Lee and his peers to fix that. One of Jim Lee's most notable works at Image Comics was Wildcats. After just a few years, Wildcats became a pretty widely known comic and could safely be called a success. So, given all that background, it was a little bit strange when the crossover Wildcats slash X-Men found its way to shelves in 1997. It should be made clear, however, Jim Lee was no longer writing the book at the time. But it still seems weird that the legacy of one of the founders of Image Comics would cross over with everything the company was created in rebellion against. Number 4. Kiss KISS is a world famous rock band, and KISS, according to Marvel Comics' KISS Nation issue 1, is also an alternate reality superhero team. This one-shot comic switches between the expected comic book action and artifacts of KISS memorabilia. The story is as generic as you'd expect. A bunch of monsters are attacking New York, so KISS and the X-Men have to team up and stop them. This comic book may seem like an out there concept for KISS to do, but when you remember that you can actually be buried in a KISS casket, this feels a lot less outlandish. Honestly, this comic was just meant to tell us how cool KISS are, and hey, in the end, it kinda works. Number 3. Chris Claremont Chris Claremont, the godfather of X-Men comics, self-inserted himself into X-Comics on more than one occasion. The most memorable of these appearances was in Excalibur, Mojo Mayhem, which has him travelling with some fellow comic book creators to a book signing somewhere in England. Kitty Pride stops their car and commandeers the vehicle, assuring the group that it's an emergency. Some brief hilarity ensues, ultimately leaving Chris and his fellow comic book creatives stranded on a British road in the middle of nowhere. Number 2. The Many Celebrities in the Hellfire Gala In universe, the Hellfire Gala was meant to be a showcase of mutant culture and prosperity on their new island nation of Krakoa. It is also quite notable because it featured several real life celebrity cameos. You may have seen some of it over on Twitter as the event reached out to celebs from a large range of backgrounds and fan bases. From Eminem to Conan O'Brien, George R. R. Martin to Killer Mike. The sheer quantity of guests featured here was staggering, but perhaps the most interesting invitee was Kevin Feige, who makes a brief appearance talking to Cyclops in X-Men 21. Feige, for those not in the know, is the father of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Number 1. Obnoxio the Clown If you don't know who Obnoxio the Clown is, that's fine. Few people do when they open up this comic. The answer is just so baffling. Turns out Obnoxio was the mascot of Crazy Magazine, a now defunct Marvel humor publication that really never had much to do with the comics. For some reason, after Crazy Magazine went under, Obnoxio starred in a one-shot comic titled Obnoxio the Clown vs. the X-Men. The story has the X-Men celebrating Kitty Pride's birthday and Professor X being a wise and reasonable guardian to a 14 year old girl hired a drunken slovenly clown to help Kitty celebrate. He also told no one that he did this, which is unfortunate because Charles is promptly knocked out by an intruder at the beginning of the story, causing the X-Men to mistake Obnoxio for the guilty culprit. Somehow the clown manages to survive against the full might of the X-Men, while the actual intruder attacks everyone from the Danger Room's control panel. Obnoxio ends up thwarting the villain, and the X-Men apologise for attacking him, but it's too late and Obnoxio simply turns and angrily grumbles his way out of the mansion. And that's our list. Know of any other bizarre cameos in X-Men comics? Let us know in the comments section below. You can follow me on Twitter, at Dan J. Durkin. And after that, be sure to swing on over to whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. For now though, I've been Dan, and I'll catch you in the next one.